without further ado, let's go ahead and get things started. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We are, uh, like I said, super excited to be hosting now uh, our fourth Trout Routes Masterclass, Streamer 101, uh, hosted by Joseph Evans and Bradley Funkhauser, who are joining us here tonight. Um, so like I said, just going to start off per usual with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so big news, Trout Routes 5.0 has dropped uh, today. Uh, we are super excited. It includes a bunch of really awesome new tools and features. Uh, quickly to cover those, it's going to include uh, Trout Lakes. Everyone's been asking for months, almost a year now, I feel like. Um, so we now have stocked Trout Lakes in the app, which is super exciting. Um, they are going to be turned off by default, so you'll need to uh, jump into the, that Filters tab and turn those on, and that'll uh, populate a small little blue uh, icon with a white uh, border around it on any of those uh, known stocked lakes. So definitely check that out. Let us know what you guys think, and uh, hopefully you get a lot of use out of that new feature. We also, another massive tool added is uh, River Miles. So another one that people have been asking for. So whether you're a big uh, float trip person or you're just walking and waiting and want to know how, uh, how much ground you might be able to cover, you can uh, definitely... Uh, make use of the uh, the new tool. It's really quick and easy. It's gonna be along the uh, right-hand side of the screen. Uh, there'll be a new kind of little three buttons. Uh, one of those will be the River Miles tool. You'll be able to click that. It'll bring up that, uh, that kind of interface. You'll be able to click anywhere on a stream and then click any second point and it'll give you that uh, immediate distance between those two points. Should be extremely accurate. And we are super excited to bring that to the app as well. Um, so again, let us know what you guys think. Uh, next thing that we brought into the app as well with this update, like I said, it's a big one, is going to be in-app tutorials. So without having to leave the app or anything like that or go to YouTube to find some of our quick little tutorials we have there, you can uh, really quickly and easily, uh, again, that's going to be in those kind of new buttons on the right-hand side there. Click that little book button. That'll pull up those tutorials that we currently have available. We'll be adding more as the uh, kind of months go on here. And uh, you can really quickly, easily learn about some of the super cool, super powerful powerful features that can uh, help make you more successful on the water. Uh, and then the uh, last couple things, a little bit smaller in terms of uh, excitement, maybe, I don't think so, you know, uh, is going to be a new slide up card for when you tap on map objects. Uh, so when you tap on map objects around the map, you'll notice things will look a little bit different, but a little bit more in line with some of the other uh, things within the app. So we're super excited about that. Just a little uh, 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 visual enhancements, so to speak. Uh, the other thing, we brought in some uh, Trout Unlimited icons. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Trout Unlimited is hosting their big national conference this week in Spokane, uh, CX3. And so we've added some icons to kind of be uh, a great mapping opportunity for people to find uh, different events and things like that are, that are happening around Spokane, great fishing access, uh, things like that as well. So definitely check those out if you're attending CX3 in Spokane this week. Um, and then just some small uh, map performance fixes. Again, I shouldn't say small. It's a lot of uh, really awesome new data. Our uh, elevation tool is about 10 times more accurate now with all of the data. Our GIS specialist was able to uh, mine through and, and plug into the app. So super excited about that. You can really see those drops and uh, changes through the river systems a lot more clearly and a lot more accurately now. So super excited about that as well. Last little housekeeping piece I want to cover is going to be uh, the next masterclass that we're going to be hosting will be on October 10th. Uh, it's going to be at 6 p.m. Central Time, um, and I will be joined by our founder and CEO, uh, Zachary Pope, for kind of a Ask Me Anything style class where we'll be uh, taking your questions ranging from what's the difference between a class one and class two stream, or where does the data come from, or simply if you want to know what the future of Trout Routes looks like, make sure you join us. It's going to be an awesome time. So, all right, housekeeping over. Let's get to why you're all here. Uh, so when discussing internally uh, the Trout Routes Masterclass ideas and potential guests that we wanted to have on, I think everyone on the team immediately jumped to a class led by, I think the fishiest duo we all know, none other than Joseph and Bradley, who are joining us here tonight. So, and uh, when I was, when I jumped on a call with Joseph and Bradley, it didn't take too much brainstorming with them to figure out that a uh, Streamer 101 class was going to be the way to go, especially with the fall and winter coming up, you know, not much better time to bring the uh, streamer box out to the water. So with that, I'm going to let Joseph and Bradley take it away. Thank you guys so much for joining us and uh, Joseph and Bradley, let's go. Matt, thank you for the very kind introduction. Um, 
known to you know, my name is Joseph Evans. Um, this is my best buddy. Bradley Funkhauser, good to see you all. And thank you all for having us tonight. Thanks for joining. And we are going to get right into this presentation. We, uh, if you don't know, we live by a motto, Travel Fish Film. That's kind of, that's our YouTube channel name. And we absolutely love streaming fishing. So this gets us pretty hyped up. We're going to go ahead and share screen real quick. And also, please leave all questions for the end, as Matt said as well. Uh, we're going to do questions at the end. Yeah, and real quick, if you have any questions, not only about the presentation that Joseph and Bradley are going to go over right now, but any questions about the uh, new uh, app update, I can cover some demos or anything like that. So if you've got any questions about the River Miles tool, the uh, lakes, how to turn those on, anything like that, make sure you drop that down as well, and we'll cover that at the end too. So, all right, go ahead, guys. Sorry about that. Don't no. be sorry. Thank you, Matt. So really quick before we get started, Matt. Can you see what we're seeing here? You bet we can. Amazing. All right, guys. We're going to get right into this. So this is our Streamer 101 master class with Trout Routes. So I'm Bradley Funkhauser. Like we already said, Joseph, been best buddies since we were 15. And streamer fishing has been a big part of our life for the most part. So Absolutely. Love talking to shop about, about streamer fishing. So. We are both uh, from the Idaho area. <clears throat> and we'll, we'll kind of talk about a little bit where we live in the end of the presentation and where we work. Before we get started, we do want to preference and say that we're not necessarily Kelly Gallup. We're not the greatest streamer fisherman in the world, but we have been doing this for, for some time now, and we like to think that we, we know a thing or two about a thing or two. So, um, yeah, absolutely. We just wanted to preference that, that we're not the greatest of all time. <laughs> Y'all can take this with a big grain of salt or a small grain of salt. Yeah, hopefully so. you learn something about something. So, All right, guys, we're going to break down this presentation into six different kind of streamer genres, streamer topics. You know, we've we've kind of breaking broken down each one of these six to better help us be better streamer fishermen. And I think instead of just fixing your streamer fishing, if you can fix each one of these little by little, piece by piece, you'll see a lot of improvement down the road. Absolutely. So first things first, right? You got to have this setup, and the setup that we like to fish with are usually seven to eight weight rods and and, and seven to eight weight reels to match that. Um, you can fish sixes and stuff like that, but kind of match the fly and the weight of your fly to the rod that you want to fish. When fishing sinking lines, we like to we like to use a shorter leader, somewhere from that two to three foot range. Definitely depends on still the weight of your fly. Um, when we're fishing all floating lines, which is what we fish more so than anything else, we, we like to use quite a long leader and a heavier fly. And that's to keep contact. That's to keep the ability to maneuver your fly throughout the column. And it just makes it a little easier than the sinking lines in that sense with a long leader. Um, and then when it comes to weighted and unweighted flies, for a weighted fly, we like to use that floating line like we said before. Mm -hmm. And the unweighted flies, we like to use sinking lines. Another thing that we use for unweighted flies is a trout space setup. Right. Really, really sexy to have an unweighted fly right at the bottom of the column with the trout space. So that's kind of how we set up our, our rigs when we're out there. And it's important to know that when you're fishing a sinking line, it should be nowhere near as long of a leader as when you have a floating line. That's kind of the biggest thing we're trying to stress right now. And you can utilize both a sinking line and a floating line to manipulate depth. It's kind of the big, big, big topic. And here's a couple of streamer lines you can use. I've used all of them. Bradley's used all of them. But we use the Cortland Streamer Sink 10 a lot. Definitely don't, in my opinion, don't buy a streamer line that you don't plan on beating to crap. I mean... When you're streamer fishing, it's it's war out there on the drift boat or on the bank. So buy a line you know you're willing to use. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, we use that that Cortland Streamer Sink 10 or 15 a lot. It just gets down quick, especially when fishing off of a boat. Yeah, absolutely. But then you might use something like the Rio Streamer Tip that's a little less heavy when it comes to fishing on the bank. And we're going to get into that right now. Foot versus float. Obviously, yeah. You shouldn't just streamer fish one of these two ways. If you want to become a better streamer fisherman, you got to know how to do both fishing off a boat and fishing off foot. Yeah. So when it comes to floating, the biggest thing that we kind of like to ref or we like to point on is streamer fishing isn't traditional timing when it comes to other type of fishing, nymphing and dry fly fishing, especially in a drift boat. So trying to set up your dates and your times, fishing late in the evening or early in the morning is a lot better of a time for those bigger fish to slide out of that undercut and to be a little more grabby than in the middle of the day when the sun's shining right down on them. So fishing those non-traditional times can be much better for you. So set your uh, float up 
uh, in terms of that in that way. Also, the fly shop, uh, fly shops filter when it comes to the app is really helpful to give those guys a call, talk to them about where to get a shuttle, what's the best times, flies and stuff like that. It's always good to just reach in your local fly shop, see what's going on, maybe buy some flies and stuff like that. Especially when you're going to a new river, a new area. If you're driving four hours away to go do a float, you don't know what's going on on that river right now, right? Right in that moment when you're about to wake up and go float it, especially when it comes to uh, stream gauges, which has a big deal with both uh, clarity of water and how long that float's going to be. I mean, if the, you know, if it's a tailwater and the dam decided to turn off the water and go from a thousand CFS to a hundred CFS, which can literally happen out here in the Northwest, depends on where you are. If the gauge drops and you don't look, which the technology is there, if you got the app, you got the new 5.0 updated, you can even check uh, river miles, you know, on a new float. There's a lot of different features that you can use to better help your success. And when we go travel somewhere new, I know for a fact we're A, we're calling a fly shop, B, we're lining up that shuttle, and C, we're checking the flows to make sure it didn't muddy up or that the float's going to take us 12 hours on five river miles because of it's moving too slow. Yeah. Or if it's moving too fast, you have a two-hour float, which would not be planned. Yeah. So use those map layers, satellite uh, imaging, which we're going to talk about here in a second, and uh, absolutely want to observe your flow gauges. Yeah. Take advantage of the time you're out there. Um, another big thing, too, if you're on a, fl- on a drift boat, cast in front of your boat. Let that fly get down there. If you're reaching too far behind you, you're going to be you're not going to be in the prime water and fishing the right depth for the most part, usually. So casting out a 45 downstream, letting it sink, getting it that way, and then fishing it horizontally back to you is a lot better of an approach for a fish. Absolutely. And if you fish with a guide ever before on a drift boat, that's one of the first things they're going to tell you is learning boat speed. Yeah. So if the boat's moving fast, you cast lower. If the boat is anchored or moving slow, you cast up or just straight perpendicular across. So for fishing on foot, you have to move your feet a lot. This is um, Streamer fishing is not necessarily something you're going to fish one hole all day. So when it comes to that, you definitely got to move your feet and you got to know where you're going. Do your homework before you get out there so you know what you're going to do and have a plan of attack before you get out there. So uh, we, we like to use a lot when it comes to trout routes is definitely the satellite feature. Zooming in on spots, seeing diversions, seeing dams, basalt rocks, uh, lots of structure, things that fish like, especially brown trout, they're going to be near structure. They're going to be near basalt rocks, bridges, concrete. They really like that stuff. The biggest fish is always going to be living in the most prime water. He's always looking for the best spot to be, and that's usually near those basalt rocks, trees, undercuts, things like that. So definitely move your feet to find those locations and, and, and hop around. Don't be afraid to fish something. You don't see something going on. Move it, get it to the next waypoint, and uh, fish that. So What's so cool about the Trout Routes app is that they have satellite imaging. You know, Instead of hopping on, google earth on your phone picking out satellite and then pinning something and adding it to your favorites why don't you go to the app satellite imaging for this example on our slide here you could literally pin that that diversion and type in diversion or there's other features where you can kind of note it out and single it out and like bradley said preparing that long walk you're about to make or maybe your your wife or your girlfriend or your buddy's going to pick you up at the end of a two mile walk down the river Plan that walk to where, oh, wow, I'm going to hit a lot of these pieces of structure throughout that walk. And you know when to skip the non-desired water and fish the desired water. And that's a big thing, too. you got to fish where those big fish are going to be. Do not waste your time. And so that's why we take these first two slides are some of the most important slides, guys. I mean, getting to the right place at the right time is the hardest and most important part when it comes to fishing in general. I mean, we're talking streamer fishing today, and if you like to – target big fish. I mean, we love all size fish, but if you really want to catch a fish of a lifetime, getting the right place, at the right time, doing your homework, using your technology that's right there in front of you to get to the right locations during the right flows, the right temperatures, everything, it all adds up. And we have absolutely seen results because of that. Yeah. When it's funny how we go back and look at the days that were our best days and it's, everything was perfect. Everything lined up exactly how it's supposed to be. And it just makes sense that it's always going to be that way. Take advantage of those times. Luck is huge, but if you can if you can make more skill and add up the list, yeah. you're going to check more boxes for sure. So let's get into number three. 
yeah seasons biggest one is seasons guys is going to change fish change with the season um so when it comes to october november december we do have to be careful about brown trout spawn and the greatest thing is you can call your fly shop ask what's going on what's the where's the spawn at are we seeing fish on reds yet definitely be careful of this and when it comes to if we're seeing some fish on reds and things like that you just want to fish your deeper water that isn't adjacent or isn't fishing gravel and things like that that those fish are going to be paired up in reds usually a fish is going to be in the tail out he's going to be in shallow stuff and it's going to be obvious to know if you're picking fish off reds you guys should be able to know that um and it's something that we take pride in we definitely don't want to mess with fish when they're on the spawn so just be careful of that but there's definitely times like right now where we're fishing most of the time they're not on the spawn yet they're not mm -hmm. even close so definitely fish the water when you're supposed to and avoid avoid spawning fish and there's some rivers with stud rainbows and cutties and cut bows that you could absolutely spend your time catching on streamers mm -hmm. i mean i've caught huge rainbows on giant yellow streamers and in, in september <clears throat> september which september is one of our favorite months right now By is far. an absolute time the temperature is great you know you're getting cooler nights the fish are moving and the fish are moving and they're they're definitely aggressive don't be afraid to fish fast two-hand retrieves and be confident Fish are swimming. They're on the move. Fish can swim so much faster than you think. Absolutely. So don't be shy to mix up your retrieve this time of year. And in the winter, big time, uh, you need to know what kind of retrieve to use. The best streamer months, end of December, January, and early February, in, in our opinions, are the best streamer months of the entire year because there's low flows in the river, concentrates big fish in the smaller areas. It's all about presenting the fly to the fish. You know, you could cover you could cover 30 miles and not put it in front of a 28 inch brown. But if you can cover five miles and put it in front of five 28 inch browns, you're doing the right thing. You're definitely going to get an eat in that way. And what we're looking for most of the times is just the eat. We don't necessarily always hook up with that fish, but there's ways that we can be a little better on our hookup ratio. But when it comes to having fish see your fly, that's the most important thing. You got to put it in their face. And when it's low flows, it creates concentrated fish, like Joe was saying. And if we can get them in an area where you can have that big articulated fly come by his face. He's got more of a chance of grabbing that thing. And usually when it's, when it's cold, super wicked cold in the winter time, these fish aren't going to be moving as fast as they were moving in the fall. So a deep, slow swing, dredging the bottom with a big articulated fly. Do not be afraid to go big. These fish eat, they eat big sculpins. They eat other fish. They eat suckers. You have to be ready to throw a huge fly, and it, you'd be surprised at the size oh of fish that eat big freaking eight flies. inch flies will swipe and get hooked on an eight inch i mean eight inch trout absolutely like we all see the it time. all the time it's so hilarious. since fish are lethargic this time of year they are not eating you know short meals everywhere they're not eating a lot of bugs they're eating one big meal every once in a while so yeah. that's why it's the best best time of the year to throw it then you got spring so this is going to be a kind of high water may june you got runoff so fish are lazy and they like to eat don't forget that fish are going to push to the sides of the rivers and they're going to be, you know, you need to get down quick. So they're going to be, again, they're going to be in the sides, but they're still going to be in deep water. And this is the time they're eating like no other high water fish are fattening up like crazy. Make sure again, you're checking your stream gauges, a small bump or a small drop in the May, June timeframe can absolutely make a huge impact on your day. If it's the river's flooding, you haven't fished it since January, and all of a sudden it does start doing a drop where it clears up and it drops and flows for a week, that's your time to go. Or if it's been low all spring and all winter and you see a little bump where it gets a little off color, fish are pushing to the sides, they're eating. Yep. You got to be ready for, for fishing in some weird spots sometimes in the spring. Fish will be in the head of the run. Sometimes they'll be really pushed out against the bank. You just got to kind of maneuver and fish that fly in a lot of different places in the springtime. But another thing is we got rainbow trout spawning in the spring, so be careful of spawning trout then. It's pretty obvious to see rainbows there a lot more. Uh, there'll be six or seven reds on one spot when it comes to, to spawning rainbows, so just be careful of that. But for the most part, it's pretty easy to avoid those fish because the flows are up yeah. and you can kind of avoid putting streamers through their faces like. So they're, that's a good idea. They're definitely they definitely like side channels. This so is something avoid, avoid those. Yeah, this is something that um, you definitely can fish dead drifting streamers too. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we don't necessarily have to be ripping that thing. The water is going to be doing it for you. So we like to fish single hook um, streamers instead of articulated ones in the springtime. These fish are trying to eat anything that's coming by their face yeah. instead of a huge big meal. So smaller ones like leeches and things like that yes. could be very effective in the springtime because the water's cold too you gotta think about that water's still cold in the spring fish you know they, they will move fast but 
if you can get a heavy fly down in this fast water, that's what's important. Then we got summer. Um, definitely, a, again, a whole different season, a whole different type of fishing. This is when things are completely flipped upside down. You're fishing an absolute, complete different way than you were in the spring and the winter time. You're fishing pocket water. You're fishing fast water. You're fishing tight to the bank, tight to structure water, short cast, quick retrieves, covering a lot of water. And talk about the morning. Like in the summer, it's hot. If you wake up at five, I mean, that's a time to be out there. Yeah. And especially kind of what we were saying is change up your times on floating, your times of fishing in the summertime during the guide avoid, season. Yeah. Avoid the guides being out there in the middle of the day. Avoid the super bright, sunny 75 stuff. You want to be there when it's early in the morning or late at night when these fish are slowly making their way out and they're feeling safer and feeling a little more uh, grabby when it comes to that. Also, fishing like smaller bait fish patterns can be fantastic in the summertime. Usually there's a lot of minnows from that spring that just hatched and there's things like that going on. So flashy single hook flies can be very effective in the summertime and you can move those pretty quick, but you don't necessarily always want to fish long, slow strips in the summertime, short, choppy, things like that can be really effective. Fish are um, moving fast in the summer. Dace, and yeah. Dace and, and Sculpin, if you've ever seen them in the river bottom and how they move, they move quick, and those fish really want to eat those when they're moving fast. They don't oh, yeah. eat these things like flies. They want to eat them like the <coughs> actual bait fish. You want to fish them in that type of style. And when you're fishing these fast, oxygenated, turbulent water, example, right below a dam, right below a diversion, right underneath, right below a tree where the water's ripping quick, you know, there's turbulence going on, a flashy small pattern will get them to make one quick move and grab it and go down opposed to a big fly. The fish don't want to leave their sneaky little summer spot. They don't want to leave into the main river and follow it all the way out like they will in the winter time. They're going to eat it quick. So that's why these small flashy bait fish patterns are kind of our favorite. Absolutely. All right, next topic. So the retrievals and, re and contact is huge, guys. This is something that you can change in your fishing to make it to, to move that fly the way the fish wants to see it. So we we're kind of talking in the slower, the water temperatures are down. You kind of want to fish a swing style, right? Cast it a 45, give it a big mend, slowly let that thing get deeper and start swinging, a, you know, mid column or a foot above the bottom, small bumps with your rod tip, maybe light ticks with your stripping hand, but being ready to, and to, to get a strike on that. And you definitely have to strip set when it comes to a swing and with stripping, it's almost always what we want to do. But on a swing, bouncing that rod tip, pinching that line is a really good tactic on a retrieval. Be ready for after the swing when you're bringing it back to you, though, that you might get an eat on your strip straight back up to you. We've had that happen a couple oh, of yeah. times. Big fish eats it. We didn't expect him to. So be ready for that when you're swinging. Um, the fish do typically hook themselves on the swing. That's kind of like trout spaying, right? You're not mm -hmm. necessarily ripping that fish when you feel them take it. Let them take that thing. Pinch your, pinch your line to your cork, which we will get on. Yeah. or we will talk later it's probably our biggest uh advice <laughs> is pinch that thing with the death grip on that swing so when that fish eats that fly those hooks drive into him and you got him that way and when you're swinging if you're learning how to streamer fish is the best way to learn yeah. pass it a 45 hold on tight if you're trying to learn everything about streamer fishing this is the best way as a beginner to learn cast swing repeat just like a steelhead fisherman this way you'll get eats know what to do when you get eats and then you'll start learning about contact and how to retrieve a fly. Also on the swing, the fish typically hook, hooks itself. Yeah. A little more helpful. But when you're stripping off a boat or off the bank, we like to cast across or slightly upstream, pulling that streamer across and down. Short, aggressive strips and warm temps can be the best. And then you want that erratic action. But then when it's the winter or springtime, you want to go cast up and across. Longer, slower strips work for those lethargic trout. And this is the most challenging form of keeping contact. In between strips, you're getting eats. You grab the line to get tight to him, and he's already spit it. This is where it gets a lot more difficult, but that just comes with practice. And oh, you're good. And one, one thing I wanted to say, guys, is if you're ever fishing like a back eddy or a pool or something that comes off the main river, don't be afraid to strip that thing straight downstream with you. These fish will eat it coming right down their, their face. Yep. So it doesn't necessarily have to be down in a way. You can cast all the way upstream and, and two-hand retrieve down or quickly strip downstream, um, keeping contact. And that's a great way to fish uh, a strip, strip you tactic. Get a fast reaction strike. Absolutely. You don't give the fish time to think about it. Yeah, that's a fun one too. This is the most important slide of the entire presentation, everyone. Uh, hands down. Can't stress it enough. Contact. If you're not tight to the fly, you'll never know if you have a take. If you're, if you're doing exactly what Bradley just said, you cast straight upstream and you're slip, stripping slow, 
you could have four feet of slack. A fish could have inhaled fish of a lifetime. Your 30 inch brown you've always dreamed of could have inhaled it and spit it. You just have to remember that if you're not in contact from the end of your rod tip to that fly, you will not catch that fish. You will not know when you get a strike. So like Bradley said, death grip, that fly line, your index finger between strips. It's almost like the eat every time you're not pinching. Yeah, it's almost always that way. And it's pretty funny that that happens. But when it comes to contact, some you, we can't always stay in straight contact with the fly unless it's a straight swing. But just try your best to, um, to, to be tighter to your fly. Be ready for that strip set. And have that we cannot stress enough. The Pinch. death grip on that cork, you have to squeeze that thing down. Get into a muscle memory each time you strip. You pinch. pinch that thing hard because most of the time you can get away with not having the cleanest strip set. If you lift your rod tip sometimes, which oh, yeah. we, we still do to this day, we get surprised by fish, lift our rod tip. Yeah, do what you got to do in lose, the moment. Yeah, and we lose contact. But if you're death gripping, you're not going to, if you don't have it stripped or death gripped to that cork and he takes a little bit and you feel it go out, out when he takes the fly, you're usually not getting that fish. He's going right. to spit it. And that's very, it's a very hard pill to swallow. If yeah, you're new to this, I'm sure a couple of you have felt that before. Yeah. So there's pin charter. All right, guys, weather. Uh, this is number five. It's honestly probably not the most important uh, slide, but it's going to remain a mystery because I have days. We have days. Yeah, we go absolutely. out when the weather is what we think, fishy and perfect, and we get humbled. And then there's days that are bluebird skies, freezing cold. You're like, what on earth could happen today? And you have the most insane day ever. So that just comes with, you know, fish hard, keep fishing. But typically we have kind of come up with the assumption that pre-storm days, you know, you got a big, big front coming through fish that moment right then and there fish yeah. before the storm comes in. And then you can go ahead and start studying your barometric pressures when they drop and rise. Typically they're not as good as when it's steady and slowly going down. Um, yeah, just go ahead. And those are little things you can watch for and kind of add in your notebook. Yeah, for weather, a lot of times we just want to see transition, things that are changing. Fish want something to happen to kick them into gear to be getting into that feeding mode. <coughs> you really want to get fish in that feeding frenzy mode. And some days you'll just see they're just on a different behavior. They're just more grabby. They're just they're chasing the fly a little more. And you can just match those days up to that river you're fishing. And I do think it changes to the river you're fishing sometimes. Absolutely. Weather sometimes changes for different fisheries and makes it a little different. So just be ready for that with the river that you're fishing. Kind of match up uh, what's kind of going on and try to recreate that the next time you go out. But almost always, if you have a week or two of steady weather and here comes a big storm front, get out there before that storm front happens or in the middle of that storm when it is coming through. You'd be surprised at how it turns those fish on. We had a fishing day actually about four days ago where it started off the day, bluebird skies, Brad's in a tank top, and he's fishing the fly slow. He's casting. He goes, Joe, slow down. Joe, slow down. And he was right. That's how we got our eats, just keeping a tight, contacted retrieve. And then sure enough, here comes a storm by 4 p.m., and we are smacking the bank, ripping it as fast as we can because that's how the fish wanted it. So that's how you study those patterns and – Change things up based off what's get, being what uh, nature and God are giving to you during that time. Absolutely. Last no, slide. This one's a big one too. Other than contact, this is your best. This is we can't stress this one enough either. Patterns and confidence. Go to your confident fly. Whatever you, if you don't think that that fly is working, change it or get confident or change your mindset. But when you're out there streamer fishing, you're hunting that thing. You got to move that thing with some with some intent. You can't just go out there and be like, oh, I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, I don't think it's going to happen. Talk this into existence. Be confident with your fly. Fish confidently. Pinch your line. Do what you're supposed to do. Rip the fly. Game. It's all in your head. It's usually never the fish. It's usually you. So just be confident what you got going on. And change your flies every once in a while if you're, if you're not feeling that. Also, we want to we wanna stress on follow your intuition. If you think something is changing or you need to switch something up, do that. There's um gut feeling is real. Nobody, nobody's telling you you can or can't do something. So when you're out there, trust your trust your insight, trust who you are as a fisherman and uh change it or don't, or fish it strong, fish it, fish it lighter, however you want to do it, but just have confidence behind that thing because if you do, you will get that eat you want and you'll be pretty happy about it as well. For sure. For and if you don't have a confidence fly yet, that's totally okay. If you don't have confidence flies on a bright day, you're gonna fish more natural mm -hmm. flies or Fish very flashy. Downsize as well. On a warm, cloudy day, go big or go home. Fish weird colors, chartreuse, yellow. Fish your confidence flies. Fish them aggressively. Fish them with content. 
All right, guys. And yep, just like we said, confidence. At the end of the day, fly choice is not going to matter the most. What matters the most is picking a fly that you believe in because a predatory fish will eat just about anything if you time up the right place at the right time. Um, a brown trout that's 24 inches. If you're there at the right place at the right time, if you fish an eight inch giant musky fly, I bet he eats that just as much as he eats a small baby gonga. So make sure that you're just fishing the fly you're confident in because fly choice might not matter. Now, Bradley and I have a couple little tips and tricks for you guys. We come to the end here that we have accumulated over time. Yes, that's my ear. And uh, <laughs> that was a funny one. I've been an idiot over the times and so is he, but I'd say yeah. probably more me than him, but let's a couple quick tips, <laughs> uh, barbless hooks. So believe it or not, the reason why a lot of these Euro nymphers and people overseas fish, uh, barbless flies is because they're sharper. If you think about it, but there's no barb, there's no nothing intruding the entrance of that hook point going into a fish's mouth. So if you fish barbless hooks on the streamer that are sharp and strong and won't bend out or fold on you, go ahead and fish those because sure fishing is also extremely dangerous. You should have sunglasses on and be fishing barbless. Yeah, absolutely. If you get stuck in you or get stuck in a fish, it's safer to have it be barbless anyways. So we've really tried to start really kicking it into gear and always fishing barbless flies if we can. If Especially we if it's a good day it. and we're catching a lot of absolutely. fish. Absolutely. And sometimes you do catch a fish with a barbed fly. It, it tears that fish up and it doesn't feel good. So especially if you're doing catch and release. So barbless flies is something we can't push enough. It, we think it should go across the country. Everyone yeah. should start using that a little bit more. And it's surprising how your hookup ratio goes up when it comes to really sharp barbless hooks. It just gets to that They're corner. Sticky. Yeah, it's sticky. It gets to that corner uh, of the bend of the hook quicker, and uh, it takes less pressure to hook that fish. So if you don't, if you do slip or something happens or you don't, stri you don't strip set, you can get to that fish and hook them a little easier. Another thing, always we almost always fish. A streamer with a loop knot it gives it a little extra kick um, i think it's stronger too i think it clinch absolutely way stronger we've we've just we've fished it a lot and we just we believe in that knot so we'll just say fish a, fish a loop knot learn how to tie one have that with you keep that in your back pocket all the time we're gonna also always have a hook sharpener on us i buy three packs off amazon you want to have that if you're not confident switch your fly now yeah bradley and i switched three flies the other day because i wasn't i was weird about all of them till there was one i liked and we fished it the rest of the day till mm -hmm. i lost it in a tree check your knot <laughs> check again like can't stress this enough if you're fishing streamers you could have the biggest fish of your life eat so please do just check your knots i mean after every fish pull it hard it doesn't take much time don't be in a rush you're out there to to catch a big fish and then uh brad likes this one yeah, do, do not be afraid to, to tag a, a pattern like a smaller gonga behind something or a leech. And what we like to do a lot is tag a leech above the streamer. Sometimes if a fish are, are short striking us, and you can tell sometimes you're getting knocked, but you're never really feeling that fish. Fishing a leech above that fly. So basically it's a bait and switch type of tactic, right? We're getting that fly to uh, to bring that fish in to get him fired up. And then it's amazing how he'll switch gears and eat the confident thing that he eats all the time, which is a small minnow or a small leech. And uh, it can really change your numbers on a day, especially if you're fishing places with a little bit smaller fish. You're not as confident with huge fish being in the area. You can get those numbers up with a tag leech behind or a tag leech above it. And we just usually do a clinch knot to the bend of that hook. We're usually fishing that with a single, with a single hook too, not, um, articulated ones out the back if you're fishing articulated fly with a tag leech above it that's kind of the approach we do it with articulations um, a little blood knot above it leave your leave one one of the two tag ends and then tie a little balance leech or something and we usually put that about a foot or two above the fly sometimes yeah. we change that throughout the day as well depending on what the fish are showing us always listen to the fish the fish are going to tell you what's going on if it's if they're swiping and not and they're following and they're not eating the big fly that's when you know to add a small fly because they might definitely take that out the back Mm, yeah, and the last <laughs> thing with tips and tricks here is when we were saying about the hook sharpener, we like to picture streamer fishing like people fish musky flies. Oh, yeah. You see musky dudes, and they hit a rock. They immediately go to their hook sharpener and sharpen that thing up. We don't want to fish the – we don't want to miss the fish of a lifetime or the fish you're looking for that day, especially if you're on a big trip and you only get to do it every once in a while. You're a weekend warrior or something like that. Definitely don't miss out on that fish. Sharpen your hooks up. Take a little bit of time. I think it'll uh, it'll definitely matter when the when the time comes. You would never believe how many people and friends of ours come up to us and blame 
their big fish getting off on the fish. It's absolutely your fault. Absolutely your fault. <laughs> so, I mean, it's true. It, yeah, you it be is ready. what it is. Yeah. Gotta All right, ready. guys. That's the end. That's the end. Um, we uh, we are guides at Peekaboo Angler. We fish Silver Creek, the Big Wood, the Big Lost, the Salmon, and stuff like that. If you are ever interested in getting out there and, and doing this one-on-one or are fishing kind of the waters that we do and getting tricks and that stuff like that, you can always call this number, request Joe or I. I'll be here all winter if you guys want to do uh, anything like that. Streamer fishing um, in the winter time can be great on the creek. So you can just reach out to that number and request uh, request me. Joe's going to be in Puerto Rico this year, so he's not going to be able to do as much in the winter time. But um, if you want to request him in the summer, you can. Absolutely. We spend our summers here, trout bumming it, living in a trailer, and mm -hmm. taking care of some incredible guests. We, got, we had a really fun year this year. Mm -hmm. We work in the fly shop a little bit. And uh, we get to guide all these incredible rivers, some of the best water in the state of Idaho, in our opinion. I mean, Absolutely. We wouldn't be here. We've fished around the state, and we're very happy where we are. Incredible guides. Incredible team. Incredible and now, now you can ask questions based off this presentation. If you want us to go back to a slide, we'd be happy to. But I'm going to quit screen sharing off of our uh, – <clears throat> Presentation. Did I come back into it? Okay. You good, sir. All right. So I will. Uh, I'll jump back in here. So we did. I threw up a, uh, a story on Instagram today and asked for people to uh, drop some questions if they weren't going to be able to make it. So uh, we will jump into one of those first, and then it looks like we've got a, uh, I think, a question from Jose, um, and then we'll see uh, as more questions here roll in. We'll. we'll we jump into those as well. So first one we had uh, there on the um, Instagram would be uh, what weather pattern specifically gets you guys most excited about fishing streamers? Like if there, is there like a certain weather pattern that when you wake up in the morning and you're like, all right, it's cloudy and raining hard, like streamers it is today. Like what, what is that one weather pattern? You kind of named it there for the most part. If you wake up, it's cloudy. It's just different. It's not bluebird skies. You're feeling like that pressure's low. You check the barometric pressure every once in a while, and you're like, hey, it's going down. Um, we usually like our, – our biggest thing we like to stress on is, is transition times. If it's been steady and it changes, that's when you want to kick it into gear and definitely um, fish those streamers at that time. I feel most confident when it's cloudy and it's a little stormy. It's just, it's just – it's a little tougher to be super confident on a bright, sunny day. But there's always those days that you end up finding um, some gravity fish on a, on a super flashy, bright day. I mean, so. it's super true. It's like <clears throat> just as much as fronts, like, like obviously you wake up in the morning, it's August, it's been 100 degrees, and all of a sudden it's 70 degrees, cloudy, and there's rain and wind. It's like game on. But yeah, get out there. when it comes to summer, I'm looking for really, really cold nights and cool temperature drops. And then when it's winter – even if it is a bluebird sky day in the winter, if you get a warm winter yeah, day, there. that is absolutely. I would I would take a warm bluebird winter first warm bluebird winter day in March or April, than like a semi cold cloudy day because most of the winter is already cloudy as it yeah. is. So yeah, just focus on your transitions basically. Yeah, if it's been the same for a long time and there's one big storm coming in, like when that hurricane came. I don't know if you guys knew from California, literally Hurricane California that blew crazy bad weather through us through our middle of our summer guide season the fishing went bonkers went bonkers for sure okay yeah right. hopefully that answers that awesome so uh jose go pack go i agree with you there man i uh, love it um <laughs> awesome and then we jose i think i think this is a question uh swing or stripping a sculptzilla size to what combination leader uh, would you go with? I think I think that's the question there. I think he, I think he gave his preferred method, but I think he's I think he wants to know what you guys would go with if that's what uh, you were throwing on. For sure, um, I think so. When it comes to a Sculptzilla size two, it's a pretty big Sculptzilla. It's gonna first of all, first thing I think with Sculptzilla, it has a big helmet, uh, mm -hmm. so that's gonna probably be in my eyes. I would fish uh, floating line long leader. So, right? Would you agree with a Sculptzilla? It's mm -hmm. gonna it's fit the flies already heavy as is. I'd fish either either in probably a seven to nine and a half foot leader. Mm -hmm. And it would probably be, I think he said it right there. I mean, 12 pound maxima. That's great. Yeah. We so like to fish. I mean, a lot of times we're fishing 15 pound maxima. Yeah. We think I mean, that's a pretty good, uh, just all around streamer leader. I like size 16 pound strength. fluoro, I think is in 15 mm -hmm. pound. 
is kind of the Trying go-to to when fishing bigger flies that will never fish 12 fishing a size two sculptzilla 12 is perfect sweet love it awesome <clears throat> Let's jump into another one from instagram here and then we'll jump back in um when fishing streamers on foot do you prefer to work upstream or downstream um definitely downstream it's easier to get like to cover water for the most part so you get in at a run, you start at the top, you fish the top, and then you fish the gut, and then you fish the tail out. Um, it's just easier to work with the water. And at any point, you can turn and face upstream, launch one upstream. It's just a little tougher to do it the other way. The only time I'd ever fish upstream usually would be if I'm fishing um, really slow-moving water with back eddies and stuff like that. Yeah. Almost always going downstream. Almost always down. Uh, in most cases, you're trying to cover water, and that's just really, really hard physically to do that. Mm -hmm. Now... A different story if you have migratory fish coming up from a lake into a river pre-spawn that type of thing and you're trying to get them on the move you could work one run three times with three different flies three different depths three different ways so work it from top to bottom like bradley said go back maybe out. add a sink tip switch your fly color and size go through it again that's something we do all the time awesome love it Next question we've got from rolling, Matt. Come on. Here is going to be on the trout lakes. So I'm just trying to set up my phone here so I can share my screen and give people a quick demo of how to turn on trout lakes. So first thing you're going to want to make sure you do is I, I will preface that we right now the new update is for uh, iPhone, iOS. Um, so hopefully that's all going to be coming to Android very uh, shortly here as well. Um, so if you are on uh, iOS, make sure you jump into the App Store update uh, within there. And then um, uh, make sure you've got that, like I said, that 5.0, that newest version of the app. And then let's make sure I can share my screen here. Oh, goodness. What's going on? Can you guys see my phone screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I lost everyone. Where did you all go? Got too many things open. You're showing how to add a trout lake? Yes. Cool. And this is with the new update, right? Yes. Okay. So again, this is going to be with that new 5.0. And so within that, you're going to go into that filters and that filters and map setting. You're going to scroll down to trout lakes and make sure you click that trout lakes on. And then you'll be able to, there you go. You can see that populated right there. We can click in. You can see we've got a little bit of species data as these are going to be stocked lakes. So we are going to pull in as much species data as we can. So it's going to be another really awesome, hopefully super powerful feature for everyone to uh, to use. So That's kind of huge. If you're a beginner streamer fisherman, that's a great way to go learn is go play around with some stock fish. And that can be a lot of fun, dude. Hey, you can catch some trout. Get into it. You know? And I mean, pulling, stripping a leech is the same thing as streamer fishing in my eyes. Oh, yeah. So there strip, a little, strip a woolly bugger in a stock trout pond. It's a great way to practice. Great way to teach yourself to keep your rod tip down and strip set. And pinch. Mm -hmm. pinch oh, yeah. Line. There we go. Awesome. And then jumping back to the Instagram questions. Last one here from Instagram. If uh, fishing from the bank, how far are you typically uh, trying to cast across the water? Are you, are you trying to place your cast all the way across the water in the middle of the river? Uh, what, where are you typically placing that cast? Okay, so that's a great question. Uh, in my personal experience, and I, again, 21 years old, have so much more to learn, but being efficient as a fisherman is something I can't stress enough. Mm -hmm. Casting nine i always tell clients when guiding fish there before you walk there so why on earth do i see people waiting this deep in the water bombing a cast all the way across can't say i haven't haven't ever done it but you should absolutely piece up a river so don't don't worry about having the cast to the other side worry about what you're going to miss and what you're not going to miss and casting efficiently there's no point in trying to bomb a cast to the other side when you should probably just be fishing it from the other side. I mean, if you're casting all the way across, currents ripping, fly lands, it, you're not even fishing the fly if it just rips out really, really quick. When it comes to a river in big size, is kind of what I'm referring to. 
I would not worry about it. I would worry about fishing your side of the seam, your side of the water, the structure under the water that you can reach and fishing it efficiently with multiple casts. Now, when it comes to a smaller river, a river that's maybe what 50, 50 foot wide or so, uh -huh. absolutely. If you can cast it across, first fish in front of you, a short cast, fish where you're going to walk, and then you can go ahead and wade, cast across. You almost almost, and then if you can reach the other side and you can cover it all, just try to hit the bank. Hit the bank, mend, maneuver your fly that way, but you almost always want to try to get it near the bank for the most part. Yeah, and, it's important. And then kind of bring it across. Big fish, fish live in sneaky spots. For and sure. if you can get it, you know, you don't want to land a streamer on top of a fish's head. You want it to either be pulling across so he has no time to think about it. You don't want a fish to have to see your fly for too long unless it's in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Right on. Awesome. Moving back here. We've got them pouring in, guys. We got a lot. All right. Oh, it's, it's uh, let's see here. Is there a primary go to color on streamer patterns? Like, if you had to pick one color, what's it going to be? The best by far, in my opinion, and this, I think some other people would say, I mean, I think Joe would agree with me. Olive over white with gold flash is the best fly you can fish. That's a real, that's a confidence color for Bradley. That's my, or else you wouldn't have answered it. That's my go to. Baby. So olive over white is fantastic because it imitates. I mean, everything, everything has a white belly. Mm -hmm. Everything has a white. And belly. usually everything has a dark top and everything has a dark tail. Mm -hmm. So, so, so things a, to think about. Yeah. So like a barely legal fly, like a Kelly Gout, barely legal. You got to see that as it's, and we call it barely legal to a lot of different kinds of patterns. Mm -hmm. It's basically all we're saying is dark color on top, light color below and flash on on the sides for the most part and that's that's my by far my my favorite go-to fly and when it comes to color too if you if you can't decide what your favorite color is or you're trying to learn kind of what colors are better for what rivers or what color is better for a bright sunny day versus a cloudy day start with black and white mm -hmm. don't don't mix into the other weird colors like yellows and browns and oranges start with black and white and then once you decide kind of what you're getting more eats on then you can go ahead and turn into your favorites to olive and tan so olive mm -hmm. would be on the black side and then tan would be on the white side mm -hmm. kind of then you can start piecing those things together yeah. but my favorite go-to color is absolutely going to be white or tan nice that's my favorite love it awesome it, it, it imitates flesh i think yeah. there we go sweet Next one we got from Brent here. Uh, Brent said he's very new to streamer fishing, and he asked if you guys could just uh, kind of quickly explain the swing method a little bit more. Is that a weight or float technique? Uh, kind of yeah. just dive into that a little bit more. The swing the swing method is most likely you're going to be doing that when you're waiting. Yep. Um, when you're fishing on a boat, you just it's moving a little bit quicker, so you want to fish it directly kind of across from you. You cast down below you, and by the time your boat meets there, your fly is going to meet you halfway. But when you're fishing the swing method, which if you're new to fly fish or new to streamer fishing, it's definitely the best tactic is you get into the run, cast get in a across. comfortable place, cast across at a 45, try to hit the other side of the bank or just cast as far as you can. Throw a little mend in it. Big mend upstream, point your rod tip down and basically track your fly. And, and this is a big thing. Keep your rod tip almost on the surface of the water. Track your, your line where the fly is coming across the water from left to right or right to left. So land, mend swinging swinging rod tip down maybe a couple pops with your forearm get that fly to just move a little bit maybe entice a strike that way and then pinch your line have your hand with that other with your uh your stripping hand have some line in that hand pinch your your right hand to that cork and that's kind of basically how that um how we go about just swinging for the most part and i think this is a really big this this top this question can be talked about for a long time because so almost 90% of the time we're stream fishing off a drift boat, we're using a sink tip because we want to get down quick. And we, as you're retrieving it to the boat, it should be getting deeper. Now, if you're walking and waiting, you should almost not usually be fishing a sink tip because if you're swinging across, it's perfect. It's mm -hmm. right at the column you want. But when it's straight below you, it's like Bradley said in the presentation, you get a lot of eats bringing it back up. And if your sink tips on the bottom with your weighted fly, you that you're just snagging and hitting things, when you are swinging, you should, ab as a beginner, should absolutely have, in my opinion, either a really light sink tip, like a T8, mm -hmm. and then, or, uh, you know, poly leader and intermediate, or a long leader and a heavy, like, sex dungeon or heavy fly with big dumbbell eyes, cast it across, mend it, and when you swing, you will know when you get the right fish that eats it. You shouldn't have to question, oh, am I hitting bottom? Ever. 
the fish, the fly should be mid column. And when a fish crushes it, you're already tight to that fly. Your rod tip should be pointing at the fly the entire time as it goes across. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, the, the, so basically maybe to clarify the setup floating line, so you got mm -hmm. a seven weight rod, seven weight line. We usually use like 12 pound fluoro or 15 pound maxima or however you want to fish that depending on the size of your fly. But let's just say you're fishing an olive sex dungeon, which is a great fly to start off with if you're swinging. Mm -hmm. Olive sex dungeon, 12 pound fluoro, probably eight feet of 12 pound fluoro. Yeah. Learn how to throw that thing with eight feet. A lot of it is Load water loading. Yep. Learn how to cast that thing. Cast out a 45 men swing. Mm -hmm. best, best, best tactic to getting into it. Yep. Boom. Love it. Awesome. Next one we got from Paul. It's just asking quick if he needs to update his software to find the trout lakes under the filters. Paul, yes, again, you are going to want to jump into, if you do, if you are running iOS on the uh, iPhone there, you're going to want to jump into the App Store, make sure you update the app there, and that'll uh, populate that Trout Lakes uh, option within those, fil in that filter setting. So, awesome. Next one, somebody asking how they can get that uh, nifty Trout Routes hat that you're rocking there, Bradley. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like quick and quick and easy answer is um, not, not, not possible. Currently, if you're not a ambassador or in the trout routes team, but uh, the exciting answer is that we're going to be doing some giveaways and some things like that, um, where we will be throwing in some of those hats. We did a pretty limited run of them to start with. So for right now, they are uh, pretty hard to, to get your hands on, but uh, there'll be a couple ways to do so here coming up. So make sure you keep your eye out for that. So cool. Awesome. Next one. Do you guys fish streamers at night? If so, any tips or tricks for fishing streamers at night? all the time yeah we uh, we do like fishing at night that's a great time to catch big fish um usually these large uh brown trout are nocturnal they're almost almost always fishing or eating at night so you're gonna want to be ready for that tips and tricks for that is know the water you're gonna go fish before you go fish it track that thing out plan your feet know exactly which which route you're taking and the water you're fishing it's tough to fish a brand new water at night you're just you're you're gonna be missing the spots you're gonna be kind of out no you're gonna be just a mess usually yeah. i mean we do it sometimes when we're fishing new places and then we see it during the day and we're like my goodness we were fish even close efficiently yeah for sure so if you're gonna spend your time out there know what you're gonna fish fish a section before. you know like the back of your hand like if you could walk it with your eyes closed that's the i would say it's the biggest piece of advice and then i would say uh I, my favorite i hate night fishing off a of drift boating it's dangerous and very difficult so i this kind of probably retains to wade fishing mm -hmm. cast and swing yeah, cast I would, swing. I would not. Pinch. They don't. I, yeah, I wouldn't. Retri I wouldn't worry about stripping and sinking lines and retrieving flies fast. I think. I think let the fish see a silhouette higher in the column. Don't worry about dredging bottom. I'd fish floating line, long leader, uh, black fly. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a full moon. If it's a full moon. Fish can see phenomenally. Fish a white fly. Fish a olive fly. Fish a tan fly. But They're traditionally, black. a dark fly, black. Just fish a black sex dungeon. Swing it. Something that's that your pushes best water. To, you want someone that way. has a big profile head and the water moves water. Mm. It's a good thing to keep in mind. But definitely go try it. You'd be surprised at how fun it is to go so out at night. Fun. But also another trick is bring a buddy. Like yeah, don't, don't be doing on. that stuff at night all the time by yourself. Get a buddy who's into it too uh, and go about it that way. Wait. That's how we first started fishing together was yep. we went night fishing one time and we became best friends. <laughs> so Love it. All right, next one from Jeff. Do you guys use split shot when streamer fishing, uh, or do you always use, and do you always use sinking leader? Uh, what about if you're euro nymphing and want to make a quick change to streamer fishing? Is that is that something you can do quickly? And any tips for that? I do we use split shot. I personally don't like to. I see people that do it. I think there's better ways you can do it by having proper flies, in my opinion, that sink better. I think it. So I think it's janky, but it works in a bind. If I need some split shot, throw it on. We'll never throw on split shot if I have on a sinking line ever. Yeah. Um, do we use sinking lines? Yes, we use them all the time. Um, use sinking lines off a boat, floating lines usually when waiting. I almost very rarely ever use a sinking line or sink tip when waiting, unless it's a very, very deep river. And then uh, when you're nymphing, if I want to switch to stream fishing, I think personally have a different fly rod. Uh, there's, you know, you can try and Euro nymph and it's just hard because you're you nymphing, know, you're going to probably break your rod. But if you have fly line attached to it, I would just say cut the leader and tie on a streamer. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have any true. I mean, you, you, there's, there's definitely some like smaller crayfish patterns and things that you can euro nymph and kind of pick up and move around. But for the most part, 
Um, if you're going to be your own infing, your own inf. If you're going to be streamer fishing, streamer fish. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, those are kind of two pretty pretty different things, I guess, in terms of tactics on on trying to get to fish for sure. So, for sure. Awesome. Next one coming in from Sean is uh, he's wondering how do you guys differ your methods in swinging streamers for steelhead versus fishing streamers for trout. For streamer fishing for steelhead, for the most part, it's almost always going to be intruder style flies. So you're going to have a, a an intruder hook out the back end. It's usually not fixed and articulated, and you're always swinging for steelhead. You're cast your mend, your swing, um, you're using a two-handed rod. It's just a little bit different style. When we when we say streamer fishing, we're usually talking about a seven to eight weight, single hand rod. We're manipulating the fly a lot, removing it like um, like the, the bait fish or the sculpin that's in the water. It's just a different style for the most part. But um, you can use steelhead fishing tactics when streamer fishing, and that's Absolutely. back to that basics, which is cast swing. cast, swing, take two steps, cast, swing, take two steps, cover water. Kind of the same method, but streamer fishing for for steelhead we almost never do. We almost always fishing like hair wings and yeah. really sexy bugs, and it's just a little bit different style. I think it's two different types. I mean, you're you're covering water is the covering water method of it both is equally the same mm -hmm. when it comes to the type of fish. They're two completely different types of fish. I'm trying to get a trout to eat my fly, where a steelhead they're not eating. They're just pissed and trying to they're trying to just do something you're to just the fly. grabbing that thing. Yeah. yeah. You, you can fish some weird bugs for steelhead like uh, really just wings. about anything steelhead are not smart they are just very aggressive right on awesome next one we got a couple from tiffany here so we'll jump into her first one uh she said she missed the first panel kind of running through some stuff uh so she wants to apologize if this is a repeat you guys covered it but i don't believe we did uh rod what rod length within the uh, like with a six to seven weight line uh, would you all recommend for someone just getting into fly fishing? So Tiffany, first of all, this, this video where we screen shared that first slide will be on YouTube on the trout routes page, uh, shortly after this presentation, give them a couple of days to edit it and throw it up there. So go there. And so you can see that first slide, but nine foot rod, you know, seven or eight weight is perfect. And Sweet. then match your lineup, match your lineup to your rod. Yeah, definitely. Quick and easy. Love it. Uh, next one is from Richard. He was wondering if you, uh, well, you guys were kind of talking about some of those flies with the uh, white belly and some of those flies you liked. I know you guys are yeah. sitting in the fly shop right now. It looks like Bradley's going to run over. Yeah, we're in the back of our closed fly shop that we work at here at Pete Wingler. We got two minutes, by the way, Matt, right? Is it yeah, just so going to shut down? No, it won't. Thankfully, it won't, it won't shut down on us at the hour mark, so we can okay. run a couple minutes over if needed. Okay, cool. Cool, so. that's fine. Um, Brad's going to grab a couple of flies. We're going to go to Tiffany's. She yeah. was wondering why there doesn't not seem to be more blue colored streamers. I read an article that trout see blue the same way as human eye. Um, be a great sugary flash color for eccentric flies. It's a really cool idea. Um, I think that, I think that blue is a color that's actually slept on a lot. So I would definitely fish. I would try blue. Um, I think it's an experimental thing. I don't know. I don't know why they're not fished more. I would mm -hmm. definitely try it. So what I was saying, my confidence fly is most likely this one here. It's a barely legal. This is a Kelly Gallup fly. For the most part, it's just dark topped and what and a and a lighter bottom. You can have black be on top. You can have tan be on bottom. You can manipulate in that way. But mostly, all the time we want to fish or the fly that I like a lot is that one where it's just got a dark top, light bottom. And then when it comes to my confidence fly, that's kind of what I'm thinking more. This is the uh, Dirty Hippie by Umqua, but just you know, big so big tan i like tan a lot tan with a white white belly imitates a lot of different things white fish and then if you so for like kind of the last thing with flies let's say you're walking in a fly shop you're starting to buy your your first streamers for the most part and starting to fish them what i always do is try to get some flashy flies so something like joe's talking about tan and bright colored maybe a different size big one and a small one so you can basically get four big tan big flashy small tan and flashy and then alongside with that you want to have it natural. all natural colored olive black um just things like that that you kind of want to have both because the, the fish are going to be on different different days they're going to be on different things so super flashy fly maybe on a brighter colored day um different sizes of those and then on a darker colored complexion day you want to fish natural colors like black brown olive and yeah. uh, i would ha i would have both kinds and i would switch if you're not getting the reaction you want <coughs> Love it. Well, guys, mm -hmm. that uh, that brings us through our list of questions. 
And I just want to say thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your evening and uh, joining me tonight to talk about streamer fishing. And thank you, everybody who joined us. Uh, we, we had a lot of fun hanging out and really appreciate your engagement with all the awesome questions and things like that. So hopefully you guys are able to take all this awesome knowledge that the, uh, the guys were able to bring to you tonight and uh, put it to use on the water. If you do, make sure to uh, tag us, tag all of us, tag Joseph, tag Bradley, tag Trout Routes. We'd love to see it. And uh, hopefully you guys get some uh, good fishing in out there soon. So Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, guys. Thank you. It. Thanks, Have guys. Have a good one, everybody. Peace.